Greeting everyone, I'm Dr. Deependra from Conceptual Orthopedic and I welcome you all in today's Connect session with Fahim sir. And today sir is going to discuss a very important topic from your exam point of view, that is the radial club M. So I think this talk is going to be very useful to all of you. So without any further delay, I welcome you sir on the board and I request you to start your presentation. So yes, from an exam point of view, it's a very important uh, topic and also from uh... Practice point of view, this is one of those things that you're going to see and uh, you may also treat. So uh, let's just go through what uh, radial club hand or radial dysplasia or radial longitudinal deficiency is. So basically, this is a deficiency of the limb. Okay, and this deficiency is on the preaxial side. Okay, so it's a malformation of the entire limb along the radio ulnar axis. Uh, where the preaxial deficiency exists, that means the uh, the radius, the radial side of the carpal joint, then the thumb, all of these are either underdeveloped or they are absent altogether. Okay, so these can vary in severity from very mild conditions, which involve mild uh, radial deviation of the wrist alone to a condition where even there is a fixed flexion deformity of the elbow along with an absent radius, absent carpi, as well as an absent thumb. Okay, so this is a spectrum of uh, diseases or spectrum of deficiencies that can be seen with radial dysplasia. Now, what causes it? We really don't know. We can't pinpoint one particular thing that really causes it, but there are theories uh, regarding abnormalities of the apical ectodermal ridge, which is involved in the upper limb development, intrauterine compression, inflammatory processes, vascular insult, uh, maternal drug exposure, especially that of thalidomide and insulin, uh, irradiation, as well as genetic. Now, genetic is especially important when uh, they are associated with other congenital abnormalities, uh, which we will speak of later on. Uh, now, a bulk of the work for radial club hand and for thumb hypoplasia was done by Brad Piamko. And this was done uh, during the 1960s, 1970s epidemic of thalidomide, where a lot of children with, uh, with limb deficiencies were born thanks to thalidomide use uh, in pregnancy. Now, uh, about 40% of unilateral radial club hand have associated anomalies. And about 27% of children having bilateral club hand, radial club hand, have associated anomalies. So that this means that about, uh, about one in four or one in two children that we see with radial club hand will be having an associated anomaly. So what are these associated anomalies? These can either be syndromic or non-syndromic. Okay, that means... They can be present as a constellation of uh, clinical uh, clinical findings, or they could be uh, isolated sporadic conditions alo seen along with radial club hand. Now, among the non-syndromic uh, presentations, there could be congenital cardiac problems, genitourinary problems, respiratory issues, skeletal problems, and neurological problems, which occur in isolation with radial club hand. Whereas we know of a few syndromic conditions where uh, radial club hand can be seen. A few of them of notable mention are Holdorum syndrome, which is an autosomal dominant condition where there are upper limb malformations along with major cardiac malformations. Fanconi's anemia, again, an autosomal dominant condition where pancytopenia is seen along with characteristic facial features such as microphthalmos, strabismus, hearing deficits. Now, pancytopenia in Fanconi anemia may start later on, either in adolescence or in adulthood. Whereas the uh, the features of the uh, radial club hand as well as the characteristic facial features may be seen early on. And that is why there are a few tests which have to be done in all children suffering from radial club hand, which will detect Fanconi's anemia early on. This will lead to proper development of the child. Okay. Then we have TAR syndrome, that is thrombocytopenia with absent radius. Now, in uh, uh, TAR syndrome is an autosomal recessive condition and the thrombocytopenia here is present from birth. And lastly, of notable mention is the vectoral sequence, which is abnormal vertebrae, 
uh, anal deficiencies or anal malformations or imperforate anus, cardiovascular tree abnormalities, tracheoesophageal fistulas, renal system abnormalities as well as limb bud deficiency. So this is the vacuole sequence, which is seen along with a lot of maternal infections. Uh, and uh, these are the four syndromic conditions or syndromic uh, associations that you can see along with radial club hand. Now the clinical presentation of radial dysplasia depends on the severity of the malformation. So it could be something which is as simple as a radial deviation of the wrist, which is like a type 1 bane to a completely radially deviated, almost 90 degrees to the forearm, a completely radially deviated uh, wrist, which is unstable along with an absent thumb, which is type 4 banes. Okay, now bane, try to classify the spectrum of clinical deformity and uh, out of these four uh, categories which Bain and Klug have classified, type 4 is the most commonest. Now type 1 involves a defective distal radial physis alone. So this leads to a minor foreshortening of the radius and a prominent distal ulna. And in spite of the prominent distal ulna, ulnocarpal impaction syndromes or TFCC injuries are not very commonly seen in these children. But the major clinical issue which can be associated with type 1 deformities of Bain is an associated thumb hypoplasia which leads to weakness of the opposition. Then we have type 2 where the deficiency involves proximal and distal radial physial growth. So here the radius is smaller in size and as a consequence of this the wrist is radially deviated and the ulna is bowed. Along with the type 2 deficiency, a thumb hypoplasia is usually more significant than type 1 and deficiency of the radial carpi can also be seen. Then we have type 3 which is the absence of the distal two-thirds of the radius. The wrist is more severely deviated radially and the hand lacks mechanical support from the wrist. So the hand is sort of floppy on the wrist. The ulna is thickened and bold and the associated thumb and finger abnormalities of hypoplasia and camptodactyly are more common and severe in type 3. And lastly, type 4 is a complete absence of the radius. Here, the ulnar bowing is marked. The, the thumb is usually absent. Till now, we were talking about thumb hypoplasia. Here, we have a thumb aplasia. And more often than not, even the other fingers, the index long and e, uh, even the ring finger is involved. They can be hypoplastic. The elbow will have a limited range of motion and there is marked limitation of hand, wrist and forearm function as well. Now that we know uh, the associated anomalies where we see radial club hand and the types of radial club hand, we need to know the, uh, we need to know the, the, the pathoanatomy and we need to know what clinical features we are going to see. So if you have to make a clinical diagnosis of radial club hand, uh, we need to take a good clinical history, radiological imaging, as well as laboratory investigations to rule out all the associated anomalies you see with radial club hand. So it's going to be more like a multidisciplinary approach. Now coming to the pathoanatomy, radial dysplasia is not just the deficiency of the bone or the skeleton, but also the soft tissues around the preaxial or radial side of the hand, wrist and forearm. Now the preaxial muscles arise from the lateral epicondyle, that is the, uh, the mobile ward, the brachioradialis and the extensor mass or extensor origin arise from the in and around the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Now all of these muscles are aplastic, they are not present and the nerve supplying them is also absent. Whereas the flexor pronator muscle mass is also hypoplastic or fibrotic, especially in conditions where their distal attachments are not developed normally. Okay, so a flexor carpi radialis may not be well developed because the radial end of the carpi 
is not well developed so the flexor carpi ulnaris is under developed compared to the flexor carpi ulnaris okay now this is for the flexor pronator mass so apart from the muscles we also have the neurovascular structures out of which the radial nerve both its branches that's the pin as well as the superficial uh, the sensory branches all of these will be absent in a severe deformity the radial artery is usually absent and the hand and the wrist is usually supplied by the ulnar artery which is usually present and unaffected so the ulnar nerve and the median nerve are usually present and this ulnar and median nerve makes sure that the hand function is usually uh, retained in these children however the more severe the deformity of the hand and wrist the more limited the neurovascular supply to the hand is going to be okay 